Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. <coughs> Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what about the people who keep sitting and attending the majlis with love but have not yet established their connection yet? Will their soul be dressed too in the same way? How could you not establish the connection yet? You sat for five minutes. That connection is there. So as soon as you sit, you listen, you watch the video, the connection was made. Now why are you not emailing and participating? That you have to ask yourself. So the video is there, the connection there, as soon as you listen, it's your first time, oh wow this is amazing, I'm going to email them. Email, help me at Nur Muhammad, our moderators are continuously making comments in videos. Click on the description, has all of these links. <coughs> Click on the description, you'll see the links to all the social media. So then it's the student's responsibility to make the connection that you email. Say that I'm watching the videos and we get hundreds a day coming like that, I'm watching the video, alhamdulillah what can I do? And then they designed our system in our emails with already pre-made responses based on this. First one will come is, thank you for emailing us, this is the shaykh's emails, these are all his links, these are all these things. The second one, meditation. <clears throat> which has all the links on how to do the muraqabah according to our teachings. And what the men should focus on, what the ladies should focus on. So we, we have an entire curriculum, we have seven books within our curriculum, they're not random books. So any of the students who are following the way, based on where they're sort of moving into, then they get those books for their curriculum. We teach muraqaba and meditation, I don't think anyone else is doing that. So then you get the meditation book, it's a two-year encyclopedia, it's a full encyclopedia of, of tafakkur and, and meditation. Then there's books on the angelic power and energy, how then now to process energy, build energy. Then if you're doing the meditation and energy, then there's book on hajj so that we know the reality of Allah and towards the understandings of the reality of Allah and to the realities of Prophet because that begins to signify the realities of Medina and Mecca so that we get to a deeper understanding. Then the Lataif al-Qa'd, then Surat al-Yaseen and the immensities of the powers of Surat al-Yaseen. So all of it is based on a curriculum. So then the students who are Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Trying to learn, they read the books, they understand the books, they begin to communicate with their teacher. So it should be very easy, the whole system that was put into place for that. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what's the reality of Imam Ali salam being born inside the house of Allah, the Kaaba? Please forgive my ignorance and lack of adab. No, Stafrul is a very nice reality inshaAllah <laughs> that Imam Ali salam was the only one born inside the Holy Kaaba. <clears throat> and every 13th of Rajab the corner cracks they say and then they try to hide that reality. But that has a, a deep reality for the closeness of Imam Ali Salam to Prophet And that we talked about in the book on Hajj. So you can get the reality of the Hajj book which describes that wh why we go to the Holy Kaaba. That why Allah is having us to go to the Holy Kaaba and to make tawaf around the black stone is one reality 
because it represents paradise. But what makes the precincts to be holy are those who are there and it has to do with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and the soul of Prophet is there. And as a result of that holiness then Allah asks for creation, come. Why? So they can take the tabarak and the blessings, right? قَالْبَ bayt الْمُؤْمِنْ بَيْتُ اللَّهِ So it means there must be Allah's mu'min is there. And then Allah for Allah's house because Allah is not present, Allah is not in this creation, Allah's house represents who love Allah And who loves Allah Nabiin, that's one corner, Siddiqeen, the Siddiqiyya corner, Shuhada wa Salihin. So Allah is describing them and describing His house. And then Allah is describing them, these are the best of people to be with. So it means that their arwa and the lights and souls, because the souls can be everywhere, but because they love Allah to such a perfection, Allah put their souls in Kaaba Sharif. So one of the understandings is the arwa and the lights of Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin are located in those precincts. And as a result that area is holy. It's not holy because of stones, it's holy because who's there. And these are the lovers of Allah and Allah is with them. So then that has an immense reality. So Imam Ali is then one of these immense ashiqeen and draws our attention into that reality and brings people because one of the gifts was ulul albab, the one whom is at the gate. And that's why Kaaba Sharif has two hearts on the door, right? The two hearts are the two tariqs that come to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad One heart for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq which is Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah and the other heart on the door is for Imam Ali because all the other 42 tariqahs are from Imam Ali Means why these two sahabi they are gifted with the responsibility of the turuqs that bring people back to the ishq and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad So they come through that reality and bring them into the heart of Kaaba Sharif which is then the heart of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And the Hajj al-Aswad when you look at it is the ring of Prophet with a stone from paradise. So it has the same casing like a stone, like a ring because Allah wanted it to be something like familiar looking, right? You look at Hajj al-Aswad, it looks like a ring. Why? Because the ruhaniyat of Prophet is sitting there like on a throne. So they make their tawaf and circumambulate and they kiss the stone and means like they're kissing the hand of Prophet and that they're asking for entrance into the heart. If the door opens then the arwa of that servant will enter into Kaaba Sharif and then be from these souls of guidance. And that's why we call these awliya Kaaba and Qibla, literally their soul is in the Kaaba. So wherever they walk on this earth they are a Kaaba, that people find guidance through them because Kaaba is not something you worship. So if somebody has a problem online then they don't understand Islam. Nobody's going and worshipping the Kaaba because worship is only for Allah Even they bow down, they're not bowing down to the Kaaba, otherwise you're, you're an idol worshipper, right? The Kaaba is the Imam because the, the soul. So we're supposed to pray in Kaaba million times more. So what do you say when you pray? As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Where? You're at the Kaaba, means Prophet must be sitting right there. Wa ibadullah is saliheen because if Prophet's there, his holy companions there, his Ahlul Bayt there, Nabiin are there, Siddiqeen are there, Shuhada are there, Saliheen are there. 
and Allah making us to say salams to them because their arwa and their lights are there because Allah with them those lights and blessings and tabarak is flowing. So they make circumvallation to reach to those barakahs and to those blessings. And all of hajj is tabarak, go to the two feet of Sayyidina Ibrahim get blessings, go to the water get blessings. Every action is based on getting tabarak and blessings, hajj is all about tabarak. So it has many, many different realities, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality behind wearing the sunnah ring on that specific finger on that side of the hand? Yeah, this is the, the way they've been instructed by these awliyaullah and the realities of uh, Imam Ali as salam and uh, the reality of uh, a ring of power and allegiance to Sayyidina Muhammad So that this finger and the holy companions they represent the hand. So Sayyidina Uthman Qani, Jami al-Qur'an al-Majeed, Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq for allegiance and Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that Prophet described that he's the highest of them, not for anything other than what Allah poured within his heart, his salam. And then Imam Ali as salam which is closest then to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because the family. So then the hand represents the four holy companions and that the identity is Sayyidina Muhammad so then when we do our tasbih, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Imam Ali and the presence of Prophet <laughs> are intricate in the process of the tasbih and the dhikr because they play a role in all of that. So it means then this hand has many different codes upon it and the allegiance and the finger of allegiance is then this finger on the right hand that that people want you to be allegiant to your wife? No, your allegiance is to Sayyidina Muhammad not to any woman. Allegiance is not to women, your allegiance is to Sayyidina Muhammad Your wife is in your jigar and your liver but your allegiance is to Allah and His Rasul because if a command come from them and your wife doesn't like it but then you'll have no faith. So means the allegiance is only to Prophet So then the ring for the ring of power and the ring of understanding has to continuously signify that. So that goes in our teachings and we have those teachings of the real love and the real reality of love. Means the heart is, is only for the love of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad Ma fi qalbi dhikrullah nur Muhammad sallallahu right? When you recalibrate to where your love really should have been and you should have been raised to love only Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad in your qalb they can only occupy because Allah doesn't like to see anyone in your heart other than His Divinely Presence. So then when we understood that every other love is in your liver. So we say, jigar it baram, jigar means put your love in other organs but your heart is only for the Divine, the Presence. And that's why also in, in our language we don't say heart but we say, in my chest area, delam, right? That when you want to describe a love and, and a sadness and a grief, not you broke my heart, but dilam means that this region in which these sensitive organs, I've put my love into this area. But qalb is only for Allah and that's why then the ring signifies the allegiance to Allah and to Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why then the man is the imam of their home, they have to make the decisions that will safeguard the home and the faith, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa 
Uh, Said, is there a way to activate the ring for the students? Activate? Yeah. You get the ring, we make dua, inshallah. <clears throat> that you you can make the dua or we make the dua, inshallah, and then you, Illa Sharif al Nabi, dua that we have on the app that Allah accept this as the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Allah activate its realities, that Prophet activate its realities and that the Nazar of Imam Ali to activate its realities. And then through the muraqabah and the meditation and contemplation continuously asking that, Ya Rabbi make this to be real for me and activate its realities for me. And so alhamdulillah that's, that's why that's why the sunnah is all over the site. We have the canes, the rings, all of that so that people can support the site, support the program, support the activities. So that's, that's the, the, the benefit of the tariqahs that if people support then they're capable of doing more. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, does Imam Ali salam have a physical maqam? Maqam but not a body, there's nowhere that his holy body is located. They have Mazhar Sharif in Afghanistan which is a mazhar means that they've seen something <coughs> of a presence and his presence is very prevalent in that region for whatever reason Allah wants that reality. And in Kufa in, in Iraq they have another mazhar because there's no physical body. And that the events with Imam Ali salam is that when he unfortunately was attacked and they thought he was passing away, he recovered a little bit and said, put me on my camel and let my body go into the desert, they don't want to pass here. So they mounted Imam Ali salam upon the camel and he was hunched over and they hit the camel to go to the desert. And then a caravan had been coming in and said that, you don't know that, you know, the horrific events that happened and Imam Ali was stabbed and we put his body upon the camel, did you see the body and, and the camel? Said, yeah, we saw a camel and we saw Imam Ali was riding and waving at us. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so awliyaullah that uh, he, he plays an important role. That's why we asked you to read the Nadi Ali. The Nadi Ali is, is, a, is a gift to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that the rohaniyat and one of the realities of Imam Ali salam is that he safeguards the faith and that uh, the trust that can't be hold or held by men anymore that Imam Ali salam will hold that trust to deliver it to his grandson Imam Mahdi It's a, not a Shia concept at all, it's completely Ahlul Sunnah reality of Imam Ali salam, that he plays an immensely powerful role for the nation and that the Ahlul Sunnah believes in Imam Mahdi salam's appearance and that's the grandson. And the tariqahs have acknowledged that uh, when the shaykhs die and the tariqah had so many of these shaykhs when they passed away there were none who were qualified to carry the trust because of the amount of, of bad character and difficulties upon the earth that was crushing and crippling. As a result even Shaykh Nazim returned that trust to Imam Ali salam and all the shaykhs have returned their trust to Imam Ali salam who keeps it and holds it to deliver directly to Imam Mahdi salam's presence. And that Sayyidina Mahdi salam will carry the trust of all the tariqahs and the Muhammadan reality and the Muhammadan a kingdom to appear upon this earth. But we described last night in their books they understood it, that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Means the kingdom of Allah is the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad and that his family is coming to take their, their royal position and to establish the Muhammadan kingdom upon this earth. And that's why when Sayyidina Isa is descending and Imam Mahdi is present at the Umayyad Masjid and they're fighting the Dajjal and they're gathered in Umayyad Masjid, uh, they're about to pray Jummah and they say, hold off the Jummah, we see 
the miraculous sign of Sayyidina Isa salam is now descending into the masjid. So they hold the Jummah and as soon as he arrives then comes to the front, Imam Mahdi salam offers for Sayyidina Isa to lead the salah and Sayyidina Isa salam refuses and says, I, I came to be under the nation of Prophet, not coming as a Prophet of Allah And even a greater understanding and deeper reality for that. But uh, alhamdulillah it's an immensely blessed occasion in which all awliya asked all their students, make intention to see that day. That if you don't make it with your physicality, if for some reason you pass before that time, Allah will bring your soul to be present on that day. Mm-hmm. Ya Rabbi grant us to see that day in which Imam Mahdi salam and Sayyidina Isa salam and all of these realities and this is the day in which the completion of faith upon this earth and wh- what will be dispensed, what lights will be given. After that salah when they go around and the appearance of Sayyidina Muhammad as a gift for, for all nations. InshaAllah. So it's an immense, immense events. That's why they talk about Sayyidina Mahdi salam. Is that when they talk about it, they're activating intention that, Ya Rabbi, we talk with all our belief in this love that I don't know if my physicality will make it, but grant our ruhaniyat to be there. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi when Imam Mahdi alayhi salam returns will awliya be given permission to use their gifts given by Allah? InshaAllah this is what they're hoping so that not, <laughs> not to be obliterated <laughs> otherwise it's, it's going to be pretty bad out there. So as, as soon as these shaitans make themselves to be seen then Allah inshaAllah will activate the, uh, the, the gifts for Imam Mahdi salam to, to, to go after them. Right now they operate within the shadows and that as a result of operating within the shadows they safeguard their existence. Once they break their covenant to operate in the shadows and then want to be physically seen then Allah will allow their death and as soon as they want to be physically seen then Allah activate then the hearts in which He wants to activate so that they have the power to go after those devils and destroy them and to fill the earth or rid the earth of their presence. And their powers are in their eyes, their, their, their heart and there's no weapons needed. The weapon enough is a, is a heavenly heart. They're now digging under buildings trying to collapse uh, temples to find the Ark of the Covenant. And they believe with the Ark of the Covenant that they can represent the heavenly kingdom. And the true Ark of the Covenant because every Prophet was an imitation of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the true ark of the covenant is the qalb al-Muhammadi and that the ahad and the covenant of Allah is in the love and the acceptance of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why if you read the Lataif al-Qalb that's the ark of the covenant. It describes the angels that carry it and the covenant that's within it and there's the house of Allah So the true covenant of Allah is the heart that has the love and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because he carries the ahad, the covenant of Allah If the love of Prophet is in the heart of the servant, they carry the covenant and the love of Allah not a box. The box was to imitate for the nation of Sayyidina Musa But when the Master appears the imitations vanish. So with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad then that's the, the reality. The 12 tribes of Bani Israel they were placeholders for the 12 Imams. That's why they were 12 because it represented their 12 fountains that have always existed. 
So before the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad then what Allah made was then 12 tribes of Bani Israel that drank from 12 different fountains. Why? Because they're 12 Imams, so each they hold the place of these Imams. Because the deen of Allah has always been Islam, there are no other religions. So now there are some Jewish people coming out and say, oh yeah, you know actually the promised land of Sayyidina Musa السلام, was Mecca and he took his nation to Mecca, not the other way into Egypt, that he took his nation to, to go towards Mecca. So maybe more of these realities will begin to come out. And they say that maybe Sayyidina Saleh, Jethro was the caretaker of Mecca and the Kaaba. And that the Tura Sini is not Sinai Desert but it's in Saudi Arabia in the region that we know. Because we know Jabal Rahma where Sayyidina Ibrahim sacrificed Ismail. It's not over that side, it's in Mecca. But you know, until, until Allah wants to reveal the truth, then people will understand that how they were fooled and what the truth and the deen of Allah is. And that's why in the deen of deen Allah is just Islam. These other titles they're all fake. All these other belief systems it's all supposed to be within the reality of Islam. And when Allah reveals what He wants to reveal then people will understand, oh, Tifa, oh this is the Kaaba, they carry the Kaaba on their head. They said then they, they have the Kaaba on their forehead. And the, the rabbi was saying it on, on their videos, say they were supposed to leave the triangle system of Pharaoh to the cube system of the Divine and they were supposed to make tawaf around the cube and, and not to be under that the triangle system of the Pharaonic empire. And the Pharaonic empire continues with their triangle and their all-seeing eye. And the other empire is then the one that represents uh, Bayt al-Mahmud, the cube. The four corners because it represents also the four corners of the house in heaven, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.